Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Welcome to worship on uh, this spring day that maybe doesn't feel so springish, okay? but it is warm and dry in here. Okay? So we are glad that you are here to join us. There is uh, the fellowship pads on the end of the pews. We ask that you would fill them out and pass them along. Okay? Uh, it is a very busy Sunday. Okay? We have a lot of things going on today. Okay? One is that we are confirming Katie Bishop. Okay? Um, and you are invited to stay after the service and to uh, celebrate with Katie in the gathering place for confirmation. Okay. And um, did do a, a pastor's forum this morning talking about my doctor of ministry work and was asked by uh, some people afterwards who didn't make it this morning if I would reprise it next week. Okay. And because it's not short enough yet uh, for what I have to do in Dubuque in a couple weeks. Um, I am going to do that. So if you are interested in what I've been doing for my doctor of ministry, you're uh, welcome to come to the pastor's forum next week, and I will be talking about that again uh, in more brevity than, than previously. Okay. We have a couple uh, additional announcements this morning, but uh, before that, did make a note. Also, we do have our newcomers uh, group, new membership class that is going to be meeting right after uh, worship this morning. And if you are uh, interested in or involved in that, uh, look for me right after we have time to celebrate with Katie and we will be meeting in my study for that. Okay. And Katie Flood has a minute permission for us. Hello, uh, I am here just to remind everybody that Vacation Bible School is coming up very quickly. It's June 19th to 23rd, and we are in need of some volunteers to help out during that week. Um, there are a wide variety of different commitment levels. Um, they're outside on the, uh, in the, in the narthex, you can find some more detailed descriptions of what we need. Um, I'm very thankful for those of you who have already committed to to sign up and to be there, and those of you who have um, donated materials, uh, those, it's, it's great that we have people who are really invested in this, um, this outreach opportunity. Um, also, um, there is a card for Katie in the gathering place, so please uh, make your way there after the service to, to sign that card. Okay. And should mention, if you, if you help out with VBS, you will get to see me in prison, uh, <laughs> since I will be being... Uh, being Paul during that, okay. Um, also then, uh, Barb Jaquiff, where'd Barb go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Good morning, I'm here from the mission team to tell you about our special challenge that we're asking the congregation to help us with for the Women's Build Week with Habitat for Humanity, which takes place this coming week. And we have several people from the congregation who are going to be participating in this event. And if you are at all affiliated with Habitat where you're going to help us out on the Women's Build Week or you're on the administration uh, group at Habitat or one of the supervisors for the site, I'd ask you to all stand up right now. Please. Okay. This is great. Thank you. Yeah. And there are others who aren't here this morning and I actually met someone who's visiting today from Jackson Habitat for Humanity. So this is pretty exciting. But our mission team is asking for the congregation to meet a challenge grant. We have put forward $500 from the mission team and we're asking the congregation to meet that and raise another $500. So this morning we have a special offering as part of that uh, request. And if you want to give cash, you can take an envelope from the pew and put cash in it and just write Habitat on it. Or if you want to write out your check, make it out to Northwest Michigan Habitat for Humanity. Thank you. And finally, this is also our uh, Sunday on which we are recognizing our Stevens ministers and they are helping out uh, with, uh, with ushering, with things afterwards. And did you, were you going to say a brief word, Joan? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, good morning. We uh, try every so often to have a visibility event about our Stephen ministry because it's a very quiet ministry, very confidential. 
so people don't know what we're doing. So um, I wanted to share with you today, uh, Dr. Hauk founded Stephen Ministry 50 years ago, and over the years he's written many wonderful books that deal in very practical ways with issues that touch our lives. And he's recently published his book on cancer. He lost his wife, Joan, after two and a half years of the battle. And this is a fabulous book. It starts the first day you learn or your loved one learns that he or she has cancer. And it goes through the entire experience with you and he did it in a very practical way because he walked alongside his wife Joan. I've purchased other books for the library so that we will have uh, one uh, of each book that Dr. Hauk has written over the last 50 years and I will encourage you to step into the library in another couple weeks and select one you'd like to read. It, I will put a little bit in the newsletter for next month as well. But um, Stephen Ministry is uh, more than one dimensional and uh, we're just glad to have you supporting us in that effort because Dr. Hauk will tell you it only works in churches where congregations support and acknowledge the work we're doing and also send us folks who need this one-to-one -one caring and compassion. So thank you very much. We look forward to being in the uh, gathering place afterwards to celebrate Katie and uh, any of us with our minister tags on uh, will be there to uh, answer any questions you have. So if you don't mind, Kip, I'd like those present this morning who are Stephen ministers to stand and uh, so that you can acknowledge them. Thank you. And now, let us continue our worship as we listen to our prelude this morning. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. Please join me in the call to worship. Joyful is the sound we make this morning. Thankful is the song we sing. Hopeful is the prayer upon our lips. Joyful 
Jesus said, Where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Now please rise in body or in spirit, and we turn to our red book, hymn number 30 in the red book, We Fall Down. seated. God of glory, fill your church with the power that flows from Christ's resurrection so that in the midst of the sinful world, it may signal the beginning of a renewed humanity risen to new life with Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, scripture reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we indeed deceive ourselves and are strangers from the truth. But if we confess our sin, our God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In this confidence, let us come before God and one another, confessing our sin first silently and then together using the printed prayer. and praying together. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has begun. So know that you are forgiven and be at peace. And as we rise to sing our Gloria, as we have been doing for the last couple of weeks, we will sing uh, first in unison and then we are going to sing in a round twice. This side will start, this side will be number two, and the Choir will be uh, the third part of the round, and I will do my best to indicate when we come in. So <laughs> please rise. <laughs>
I think you may be seated. No. No? Passing at the peace. Okay. Don't sit. Don't sit. <laughs> Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace we were called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Okay, um, I would like to invite any young children to come up for the children's message. 
Oh, it's going to be pretty hard because you get all the questions, don't you? <laughs> here, we'll just sit right here together, all righty? I know my name is Sue, but I don't know your name. Jack Erickson. Jack, glad to meet you. I'm married to a Jack. It's a beautiful name. <laughs> Today's message for the children and, and then later for all the adults, and you get to hear it from the adult side too because you get to stay in here because you're here for somebody's special day, aren't you? <laughs> oh, okay, well, I'll make it special for you. Today is about a walk with Jesus. There were two men who were leaving Jerusalem after, after Jesus was crucified and then he was, he was buried and put into a tomb and he, everybody was really upset because it was a chaotic time and it was very stressful. And then what happened is on Sunday morning, on Easter morning, that's when we celebrate this day, Jesus was no longer in the tomb. He had risen. And everybody was talking about it. Well, these two men decided that they had to get back to their town, and they lived in a town that was just a few miles outside of Jerusalem, and they were walking back to the town of Emmaus. And they were talking about what had happened during these days, and they, they were just all, all concerned about what had happened and that the Jesus was no longer in the tomb and that people were saying he was alive and the women were talking about this. Well another man came along the road and decided to walk with them to Emmaus. And he asked them what they were talking about and they shared with him what had happened. And he indicated that all this had been told to be long ago, that these things were going to happen. And they got to their home and it was getting towards dinner time and they invited Jesus to have dinner with them. And so he, came, he invited Oh, he was glad to have dinner with them because he was probably hungry too from that big walk. So he sat down at dinner and he broke the bread and he gave a blessing, asking for Jesus' blessing, or asking for God's blessing on their food and their time together. And then the men realized who the guy was that joined him on the road. Do you have any idea who it might have been? Jesus. Jesus. You're right. You've heard the story, haven't you? It was Jesus. And do you know how they knew who he was? Um, the blessing? Absolutely. You are right on. They knew it was Jesus by the breaking of the bread and the blessing. And so today, the message for the youngsters and for all of us, because we all have a little kiddo inside of us, don't we? <laughs> Our message for everybody is whenever you sit down to a meal, whether you're alone or whether you're with lots of people, always remember to ask for a blessing from Jesus. I have a couple things you can take home, okay? And we're all set. Would you like to say a little prayer with me before we go? Sure. Okay. Lord, we don't have a lot of children with us today, but we're certainly blessed to have Jack with us, and we're very grateful you're here. Um, we ask you to be with all the children throughout the world, be ever present to them, and may they know your compassion and your love each and every day, throughout every moment. We ask you to bless everybody this morning who's come to church and to celebrate with us our faith and our passion for you. Amen. Okay. Oh, I better give this back to Kip. <laughs> God of life, your spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Your spirit inspired the prophets and writers of scripture. Your spirit draws us to Christ and helps us to acknowledge him as Lord. We ask that you will send your spirit now to give us deeper insight, encouragement, faith, and hope through the proclamation of the Easter gospel. Amen. The book of Acts records what happened after Jesus had risen and the Holy Spirit sent the apostles out to share the good news. In today's reading in the New Testament, we continue to hear Peter proclaiming the good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, 
both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other disciples, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. The word of the Lord. In our gospel reading from Luke, Jesus appeared to many of his disciples between his resurrection and his ascension. Today we hear from Luke about another of those appearances. A reading from the gospel according to Luke. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast, One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are. And how slow to believe that all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going on a little farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, saying, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The word of the Lord. Our epistle reading on this Sunday comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. As we continue to read from this letter, let us attend to God's word for us on this morning. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed, from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. 
and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. This is the word of the Lord. To pray with me, please. Lord our God, use the words of my mouth. Use our ears as we hear and our minds as we think that you would speak to us and that only what is from you would make its way through. As we pray in Christ's name, amen. So our, our government has a policy. We don't negotiate with terrorists. Right? It's actually a pretty good policy for a government because if you pay ransom to terrorists, you're encouraging them to take other people captive. It's not such a good thing for the person who's being held captive, though. It's a policy that protects you know, the larger number of people at the expense of the few. <clears throat> but thanks be to God, our God does not have that policy. Okay. Our God is willing to negotiate with those who hold us captive. Okay. And our God has paid our ransom. He has redeemed us, is the word that is used. That's what Peter is talking about in this passage today. He's saying that, that we have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. We have been ransomed by the blood of Christ, freed from captivity. And he says what we have been held captive to is the empty way of life handed down to us from our ancestors. It's not what we usually think of as, as terrorists or as those who would hold us captive. He's talking about a way of life that holds us captive. And the phrase he uses here about this empty way of life is used elsewhere in Scripture. It's used in the book of Ecclesiastes, where instead of translating it as empty, it's translated as meaningless. The book of Ecclesiastes says meaningless, meaningless, all is meaningless. Or vanity, vanity, all is vanity. The life that has been handed down to us as human beings, Peter tells us, is, is a meaningless life. And that is not something we want, is it? We all long for meaning. We want our lives to mean something. We want our lives to have purpose. But Peter is telling us that because we are separated from God, because of our, our sin, because of our denial of who God is, we are running around frantically seeking to make meaning in our lives. And we're held captive to that. Our need for our lives to mean something is, is a desperate need. And so we will look anywhere for meaning. We try and make our lives mean something by being successful in our careers. We try and make our lives mean something by, by producing something that's going to outlast us. We try to make life meaningful by, by amassing wealth or, or power or prestige. We will go to great lengths to try and give our, our lives a sense of meaning. But one of the things that Scripture teaches us is that there is no meaning outside God. 
If we seek to give our lives meaning and purpose, if we seek our value anywhere outside of God, we're going to be disappointed. That life that we've been handed down of trying to find meaning and purpose without God, Peter says, is meaningless. And we're held captive to it. But the good news is that Christ has freed us from that captivity. We have been freed by the the precious blood of Christ, is what Peter says. How does that make any sense? How does Christ's death on a cross free us from captivity to this straining after some kind of meaning and purpose in life? Well, I think it does it in, in several different ways. You know, if, if, for, have any of you read the book of Ecclesiastes at some point? I don't see a whole lot of hands going up on that one. Yeah, a few, okay. Uh, you know, if you read through Ecclesiastes, he talks about how meaningless things are, and over and over the refrain is, it's meaningless because we're going to die. We all die. Okay? And death robs our life of meaning if we seek to make our meaning in what we've done or in in what we've accomplished or in what we've amassed. The wealth that we've gathered, someone else is going to get it when we die. The things we've done that were great successes, well, someone else is going to take that over and either make it more successful or or ruin it. The people that we've loved, they'll remember us for a while. And then another generation or a generation after that comes and we're forgotten. Life loses its meaning in the face of death. But because Jesus has broken the bonds of death, death doesn't rob our lives of meaning anymore. When we know that Christ has died for us, when we know that through Christ we have eternal life with God. That means all those things we do now have meaning and will continue to have meaning. Death does not rob our lives of meaning because Christ has defeated death. But there's more than that. One of the things that that challenges us, the reasons we're captive to seeking meaning and purpose, is because not only do we want our lives to have value, we want to have value. We want to know that we're worth something. Not just that life has meaning, but my life has meaning. And often we feel like we don't have a lot of value. One of the best ways to find out how valuable something is is to find out what someone's willing to pay for it. We learned that over you know, the last year when we moved here and we're trying to sell a house. I know what I thought it was worth. No one seemed to agree. Right? <laughs> the value of that house was less than I thought, but, but what if, what if somebody came by and, and saw that house and saw something in it that, that we had missed? What if they had a vision for what this house could be that was greater than anything that that we had thought of? What if they realized that that somewhere buried in that house was an immeasurable treasure? And so they were willing to pay five times what we were asking for that house. Suddenly its value in our eyes would go way up. Well, Peter reminds us that that our lives are valuable. He says we've, that we were not, not redeemed, not purchased with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. You know, Psalm 49 reminds us of the value of a human life. In Psalm 49, it talks about those who trust in their great 
great wealth and, and boast of their riches, but that no one can redeem, a, excuse me, that no one can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for them. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough so that they should live on forever and see decay. No payment was ever enough. But what Christ paid was enough to ransom us. And that means that he thinks we're that valuable. That no matter what we've accomplished or failed to accomplish in life, no matter where we have succeeded or where we have met with failure, no matter how loved we are by those around us or how ignored we may be, in his eyes, we are immeasurably valuable. Our value is in his eyes, not in our own. We don't have to seek meaning and purpose because he gives it to us. And that is the other aspect of what Christ's life and death and resurrection does for us. His death ransoms us from, from pursuit of meaning in a life that will be meaningless without him by showing us who God is. Peter says that it is through Jesus that we believe in God. It's through Jesus that we trust in God. The God who raised him from the dead and glorified him so that when we look at Jesus, we are putting our faith and our hope in God. In seeing who Jesus are, is, we know who our God is. That our God is loving, our God is just, and our God is willing to suffer and give himself for us. And out of that then, we are given purpose because we live lives then of gratitude, of glorifying God and thanking God for what he has done in Jesus Christ. And in doing that, we, we fill the purpose for which we were created and our lives have meaning. Christ has redeemed us from a meaningless life, from, from pursuit of meaning on our own. Because he shows us how valuable we are. He shows us our purpose in glorifying God. But he does one thing else with that that follows from it that, that Peter talks about. He says, now that you've purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. You see, one of the problems of, of our seeking our own meaning, seeking our own purpose in our own accomplishments, our own uh, accumulation, our own fame, okay, is that that always puts us in competition with others. We want to stand out as the one successful in our business. We want to, want to earn more than the other guy. We want to be seen as more loving, more kind, more respected, more famous. But it's always in comparison. But because Jesus died for us and we know that our value in his eyes is infinite, that we know that, that we call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, that is, not in comparison to anybody else's work. Okay? He judges us individually. Okay? Because of that, we're not in competition with anyone else, and that means we can love them. Okay? It doesn't matter what they have done to us, what they have taken from us. It doesn't matter the degree to which they love us back. Because we are infinitely loved by our God as demonstrated in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus, we're not in competition with anyone. There's no envy or jealousy to keep us from being able to love another. And because of that, Christ's resurrection not only frees us from this meaningless life handed down to us, he not only frees us from, but he frees us for love of others. 
And that then fulfills our purpose and our meaning, that we become the creatures we were created to be, free from, from scrounging after some way of giving meaning and purpose to our lives, to recognizing it's been given to us, and we can love others and share that meaning with them. It's not an easy way of life, but it is a life filled with meaning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. That good news that Peter proclaims, that in Christ's death and resurrection, our lives are giving, given meaning and purpose, that we are freed to be able to love others and love our God. Okay. Those promises are the promises that Katie Bishop is laying claim to today in her profession of faith and her confirmation. Yeah. And so I'm going to invite Katie to uh, come on forward, yeah. along with Katie Flood, who has been her mentor, okay. and Ann Becker, who is going to present her in just a moment. But before we present her, Okay. Um, Katie is going to share a little bit about her confirmation experience. Okay. It is on. A group of fellow eighth graders and I went through the confirmation process at the Petoskey Presbyterian Church. Every Tuesday we would meet to discuss and learn more about Christianity. During the six weeks we had to meet with a mentor. I met with Katie and we talked in more detail about the things we had learned in previous sessions and what was going on in my life and in Katie's life. When going through the confirmation process, I struggled to find an object that would represent my faith. Katie helped me to realize that it doesn't matter what your object, your what object your faith proclamation is on, but what your faith is. My project has a continuing theme that God helps me through the good and bad points in my life. One quote says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4.15. If you would like to look at my project in more detail, it will be in the gathering place. Thank you. Okay. And hand this down to Ann. Okay. Um, Katie Bishop is presented by the session for the reaffirming of the baptismal covenant into which she was baptized. She now desires to profess publicly her faith and to assume greater responsibility in the life of the church and God's mission in the world. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna let you hold that so when you answer questions, people can hear. Okay. Brothers and sisters, we gather around the baptismal font for confirmation because confirmation is confirming those promises that were made on Katie's behalf at her baptism. And so Katie, we rejoice that you now desire to uh, declare your faith and to share with us in our common ministry. In baptism, you were joined with Christ and made a member of his church. In the community of the people of God, you have learned of God's purpose for you and for all creation. You have been nurtured at the table and you've been called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so hear these words from Holy Scripture. You are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple, a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. We are what God has made us, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So I'm going to ask you to come stand a little closer to the baptismal font and to me. So now, as you publicly declare your faith, I ask you to reject sin and to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and to confess the faith of the church, the faith into which you were baptized. So, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn away from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ 
and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, answer, I do. I do. And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, answer, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. And now, with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in the bulletin. And I would actually like to invite you to uh, rise in body or spirit as we profess our faith. So let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated. And so, Katie, you have publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and your service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Let us pray. Gracious God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be your servants in the world. Renew in Katie the covenant you made in her baptism. Continue the good work you have begun in her and send her forth in the power of your Spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to place my hand on your head, okay? Okay. (laughs) O Lord, uphold Katie by your Holy Spirit. Daily increase in her your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. And so Katie has publicly professed her faith, and she has expressed her intention to continue in the covenant that God made with her in her baptism. So let us welcome her uh, into the worship and mission of our congregation. You can clap. And we have a couple of things to present to you. Um, So... This is your certificate suitable for framing, saying that you are, <laughs> you have been confirmed and are a uh, regular member of the church. So I'm going to set this here. Okay. And you may. Oh, this is, this is from the congregation. Um, we, we picked it out especially for you. And um, congratulations. And Katie, um, I didn't say this to you yet, but I'm going to ask Katie to come and stand with me at the end of the service so that as you are coming out, you will have an opportunity to to greet her and welcome her. So you may be seated. Thank you. And now, as we turn to uh, our time of prayer, it is... uh, been a lot in this service, so I would ask, uh, do want to share joys and concerns, but would ask you to share them briefly. Uh, so what are those things that are going on in life that we can be lifting up together as a congregation? Anyone have something to share? Gail? So Shauna Clark and Kelsey and Dan. Okay. Thank you. Others this morning. Yes. Dre yes. Low. Oh yes, yes. Okay. 
others this morning. I was asked to remember the, uh, the family for whom uh, we are going to be participating in the, in the Habitat build, um, that this, uh, not only the, the house itself, but the whole process would be a blessing to them. Okay. Anything else this morning? Let us turn to God. Oh, yes. Wonderful. So, prayer of praise that Cable's uh, MRI brain scan is, is clear after a year. So. Okay, well, let us turn to God in prayer. Lord our God, we are so grateful that you have chosen uh, to add to our number this day uh, Katie Bishop, that in her, uh, in her confirmation that she has laid claim to the covenant that you have established with her in baptism. And, uh, I'm grateful for a faithful congregation and faithful family who have raised her in the, in the faith that she would choose to do this this day. God, we lift up to you the prayers that have been mentioned, prayers of praise for Cable, prayers of, of uh, love and support as for those who are mourning the passing of Drilo, and prayers for, for Shauna and, and her children that you would uh, bless all those whom we bring to mind, Lord, and that you would use us to be a blessing in their lives, that the prayers we pray we would not simply uh, lift up, but that we would also seek to, uh, to be part of your fulfilling of those prayers. God, there's so much that is happening in our world, and we trust you with, uh, with it all because you are the one who created and sustains this creation. And we thank you that you have entrusted in us this ministry of reconciliation, that as those who know that we are free, we would seek to use our freedom for your glory and for the welfare of your people. All those things we have mentioned and those we have not, Lord, we, we entrust to you and lay at your feet and hear us now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, in gratitude for all God has done for us, let us receive our offering this morning.
God of miracles, you do wonders in this world by transforming our lives through your Holy Spirit. Bless these gifts that they may help us to serve in your work of transformation, to overcome doubt and spread hope, faith, and love. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen. Now please join in the singing of our concluding hymn, number 495, We Know That Christ Is Raised. And as we faithfully live our lives in the coming week, what does God call us to do? God calls us to be a Christ-centered missional church that proclaims the word of God and demonstrates the relevance of his word to all people. Brothers and sisters, let us go from this place as people who know that we have been ransomed, that we are free, and we are free to go out and love others. And let us go receiving God's blessing as we have received it. And this blessing uh, is going to be proclaimed both uh, by Katie and me, okay? because your blessing to her is a blessing to all of us. Okay? So receive God's blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on and abide in us this day and every day. Hallelujah and amen.